Each season of MasterChef brings an insane amount of flavor to the table, but that doesn't mean the flavors always work. Today, I'll be going over one cook from each season that nailed the competition if it was scored like golf. And if I have to pick one contestant from season one, it would be her. I was like, oh, I'm in heaven. Although Farouk came very close in competition for being my very first pick for the day, I guess some of you might be up in arms for going with Avis instead, right? I mean, no doubt, she was one of the kindest souls we've ever seen on the show, but being sweet and full of enthusiasm doesn't always translate to being a great cook, huh? Sadly, no matter how hard she tried, her culinary skills barely hit the mark. Like, take what happened during the elimination challenge of episode 4, for instance. The theme is Chinese. Having won the previous mystery box challenge, Winnie had the choice to pick the star ingredient, and she went with mandarin oranges. Now, every contestant was tasked with skillfully incorporating the citrus delight into Chinese cuisine creations. While most contestants were pumped up, Avis was sweating bullets. The problem is, I don't know how to make the perfect Chinese dish. Well, it looks like things just got 10 times tougher for her. And guess what? When Chef Ramsay stopped by for a quick update, Avis was all over the place. This is my carrots. I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, go ahead on and just, you know, cook my... Boiled carrots. See what I mean? Apparently, she was going to use carrots, but Chef Ramsay wasn't in on her plan. Looks like she's panicking, and it shows in terms of what she's putting together. Yes. Big trouble in Little China. Anyway, cut to the tasting, and Avis presented her Chinese orange chicken with vegetables and noodles. And right off the bat, Chef Ramsay wasn't impressed. Is that a dish to be proud of in the 21st century? Clearly, the dish looked like a disaster, but Avis thought otherwise. Yes, it is. And when it was time for the tasting? Well, maybe everyone would have been better off if they just judged the book by its cover. It looks like a sort of little chicken noodle vegetable dinner from a gas station. Damn, that was brutal. But nope, he didn't stop there. Now, I don't see the authenticity of a unique Chinese delicious dish. Avis's heart sank as reality hit her like a ton of bricks. Eventually, she ended up being one of the very first contestants to be eliminated from the MasterChef kitchen. But before she left, the judges urged her to keep cooking and honing her skills. Avis, you've got such heart and soul that you put into your food, Don't which stop. is inherent in cooking. Well, of course, Avis would be the only one with the unique honor of being the first to go, but she was far from the last. Now, heading over to season two, and this contestant here, if you thought Avis was bad, well, let me say that we're just getting started. I want to run over to Adrian and just give him a big hug right now. Yup, I'm talking about none other than Alvin, known for his vast culinary knowledge alongside a technical arsenal used for molecular gastronomy. I'm hoping that carries me through today. However, despite all that, he failed to execute, well, anything properly. And it really caught up with him in episode 7's elimination test. The theme for today's elimination test is desserts. And what was the main ingredient of the theme, you ask? Check this out. Coffee. And so the test began. The contestants were given one hour and 30 minutes to make an exquisite dessert. Now Alvin was feeling really confident about the challenge. But when Joe and Graham reached the station, they were pretty taken aback by his ideas. I'm trying to pull off coffee spheres to put in the beignet. Wow, before so like they a fried. liquid center, yeah, cafe liquid du center, Mar. Yeah. Our guy here was putting his molecular gastronomy to the test, that's for sure. But Joe reminded him not to get lost in the weeds, no matter how scientific those weeds were. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Make us dessert. It's not a chemistry experiment. You need to convert him. And finally, when it was time to present his dish, well... Mixed with uh, sodium alginate, so set to cool, and that's dropped into a calcium chloride bath. Now, I'm not a fan of what it looks like, and I'm sure I'm far from the only one with that opinion. But guess what it tasted like? It's extraordinarily bitter. As if that wasn't enough, Chef Ramsay then came up with a rather unsettling description. There is like a coffee blood clot. Yikes, not sure where Chef Ramsay got that idea from. But leave it to Graham and he decided to keep things real. Things like this give what I personally do day in and day out a bad name. Now, there's a reason why molecular gastronomy is popular in the fanciest restaurants the world over. If you can nail it, it's gonna be a hit. But if you can't, well, you'll be like Alvin over here. Like Chef Ramsay's parting words for Alvin, had he understood the basics before getting into the more complicated stuff, who knows, maybe he could have gone further into the competition. But well, there's no coming back from some mistakes, just like what happened with this next contestant from season 3. See, there are those who deserve to be a part of the show, and then there are those who absolutely don't. 
and Tally is the poster child for the latter. Oh, man. If you ask me, I think Tally should have never made it onto the show in the first place. The fact that he found himself in the bottom three more times than not should be a reason enough to believe that his culinary skills weren't up to par, right? They can't see the beauty and the genius that is my food. And if that wasn't enough, don't even get me started on his attitude. I'm gonna have to throw some under the bus. So it happened during a say it with me now elimination test and the theme of the night was everything fish. Because it's time to go fishing. Now, the winner of the mystery box challenge being Felix got to hand select each and every fish that her competitors would be cooking. And she got to choose from a wide range of fish being rockfish, John Dory, catfish, yellowtail, salmon, and arctic char. So eventually, she settled with arctic char for Tally. It's probably one of the easiest fish if you know what to do with it. But this guy did not, and that's for sure. During the rounds when Chef Ramsay reached Tally's table, he was already questioning Tally's poor choices. Fish sous vide it. Yeah. And I'm going to finish it on the skillet. It's an oily fish. Apparently, Tally thought the fish would cook in its own juices, but, well, maybe he should have studied the science with our old pal Alvin, huh? Regardless, Chef Ramsay wished him luck and moved on. God knows he needed it. Soon enough, the judges were discussing each contestant's dishes, and it seemed like Tally was the top of their concerns. Arctic char is certainly the easiest fish here today. Yeah. You could steam it, grill it, saute it. And no, that wasn't the only issue. Now, listen to this. Serving green lentils with it, bacon, mustard. All those flavors are gonna obliterate it. What's more, Graham chimed in with his own set of complaints. I mean, that's stuff that you would serve with like a nice roasted piece of meat. Some time later, when the judges urged the contestants to taste their own dishes before calling it a day, Tally realized that things weren't exactly going his way. You rubbed the Arctic char and Dijon mustard. It was time for plan B, which was a rather risky move. But Tally went with it anyway. Beautiful sous vide filet on the skillet. I might, I might just serve it like this. You can serve it like that now. Yeah. Chef Ramsay, however, wasn't happy with his little plan as the fish was stone cold. However, Tally reassured him that he could fix it. Spoiler alert, he couldn't. Now, guess what Tally had to say about the whole ordeal. It's frustrating when Chef Ramsay interrupts me in the middle of my creative genius explosion. Wait for it. It's kind of like interrupting a master artist like Picasso. And there it is. Now, you must be wondering what the final tasting was like. Look, I don't want to spoil this for you, so you better check it out for yourselves. Kind of pro produce a... And when Joe interrupts you like that, believe me, it's not a good sign. You think you're going to impress us with things like sous vide, emulsify? Calling his dish a mess would be an insult to messes all over the world, right? So at the end of the day, what you have here is basically destroyed lentils. All you could see was a bunch of herbs with no seasoning and a piece of fatty bacon on top of poorly cooked arctic char. Simply put, it looked really sad. You've consistently disappointed us. And Chef Ramsay didn't hold back either. And I watch you cook and I just get so pissed off with you around. But just you wait till you hear what he had to say next. It's master chef, not master bait. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of that iconic line from Chef Ramsay before, but did Tally own up to his mistake? Not really. Maybe they're just a little too old school, and they can't see the beauty and the genius that is my food. Well, there was only one way to humble him, and that was to show him the damn door. But let's keep things moving, shall we? You see, Sasha from season 4 was all about confidence. You sure you want to put cheese on it? It's gonna work out, trust me, Doc. But hey, confidence can only take you so far, right? because once the heat of the competition cranked up, she got booted out just like that. Hailing from Alabama, Sasha has gone down as the first contestant to place 19th in the history of the competition. Now, let me remind you, it wasn't anything to be proud of. The whole Longest Sin episode? Sasha's confidence took a nosedive as soon as her dish was presented to the judges. It looks like someone's pooped on the plate. Mm. But guess what? She held her head high. She wasn't about to bow down to some criticism from a bunch of glorified judges. Oh no, Sasha was sure of her skills. But the judges, not so much. It doesn't taste nice at all. Oh. It's a combination, it's just all wrong. One after the other, Sasha faced every ounce of negative feedback like it wasn't even about her dish. What's it worth now? With the grits, I'll say 55. <laughs> anyway, considering her dish made it safely into the trash, her elimination wasn't much of a surprise. By the way, did you know that Sasha kicked off with Chrissy and Kathy almost as soon as they met? <laughs> now, imagine if she stayed in the competition for longer. 
I can't imagine the kind of drama they would have collectively brought to the table. Let her have her moment, because I don't think it's going to last very long. Either way, with Sasha's elimination, the judges made it a point to send a message across all the contestants. In the MasterChef kitchen, it isn't sass, but skill that counts, and Sasha had none. Now, moving on, my pick from Season 5 is obviously Francis. And Christian and I both know it. We look at each other, we're like, this is not what we should have put out there. And So, if you caught up to Season 5 of MasterChef, you know that Francis was a pretty solid chef who had a pretty great vibe with everyone. But when it came to teamwork or replicating dishes, he was kind of lacking big time. That is exactly what went down in Episode 7's Spring Rolls Pressure Test. Spring Rolls. Served with a delicious dipping sauce. So during the tasting, Francis presented his spring rolls, but it failed to make an impression. The ratio of filling is obviously way out of proportion. There was so much oil that Joe even pressed the piece under the napkin to show how the cold oil penetrated the wrapper. These are really greasy. But just you wait for the final blow. Well, if you go home tonight, you could order in some spring rolls. Out of all the mistakes he could have made, it had to be grease. Eventually, Francis found himself in a really sticky situation that he could never recover from. Yep, it turned out to be his very last day on the show. Now, coming to season 6, and this contestant made more enemies than friends in the competition. You see, Shelly was a fighter. I'm a single mom, and I got a 9-year-old who's my everything. She's my biggest cheerleader. Given her rough background, her determination and passion to make a name on MasterChef shone through as she put immense hard work into the competition. I'm just happy that I believed enough to get here. But gradually, things started to go downhill. From shying away from responsibility to randomly throwing teammates under the bus, Shelly's journey had a massive fall from grace. With time, she started to lose her footing, and her cooking got more and more inconsistent. But if I have to pick her worst performance, it would be this dish right here. A peanut butter and jelly five spice spring roll. And well, what started on a rough note ended in an even bigger mess. And uh, that looks like a stuffed condom. Plus, you know what? He is not wrong. With that, let's move on to Season 7, when the elimination test in Episode 6 came down heavy on one particular contestant. So, the contestants had to prepare a lobster tortellini, and right off the bat, they started having a really hard time. Ugh, I don't know what to put my eggs in. Focus, Lisa Ann. Things got so bad, that Ramsay had to walk over to her station and remind her to get her act together. Now, Ramsay gave her probably some of the best advice he's ever given, but what did she give him in return? That's one way to say thank you, I guess. Either way, her cooking skills didn't make anything better. Four tortellinis burst. And look, it's got no top on it. Now, that was just tortellini. Wait till you see what happened with the broth. <laughs> it's a little salty. Things got heated real fast when Chef Ramsay questioned how serious she was about the competition. You know how hard I work to get I here? I'm not convinced. I work really hard to get here. MasterChef is all about letting your food do the talking, and not your empty promises. However, the famous chef was done with her excuses, and she got the boot before she even had the time to process what he'd said. But this next contestant came close in competition when you consider her not-so-impressive track record on the show. That fish was spicy? Yup, that's Paige for you, the self-proclaimed culinary whiz that MasterChef really could have done without. You see, Paige was so full of herself that her one single move tanked an entire team challenge. Yeah, all on her own. As a result, she found herself facing a pressure test, where the contestants had to recreate Aaron's grilled pork chop dish. Now, you'd think after the over-seasoning disaster earlier, she'd be humble about this one, right? Well, you don't know, Paige. I'm confident that I can replicate it. I'm half Mexican, so I'm pretty familiar with Mexican flavors. Right. Despite her misplaced confidence, Paige's attempt to recreate the dish left a lot to be desired. Just that stark white fat, unrendered. Definitely. You're almost a little too smiley for me for this pressure Sorry. test. Christina found Paige's pork chop to be messy and undercooked, and the sauce, well, listen to this. Definitely overreduced, just sloppy, it's messy, it's almost like you just don't care anymore. Despite her smiley demeanor, Paige couldn't hide from the harsh reality. Her dish was a flop, and her confidence maybe was a tad misplaced like I said. It was clear that she had a lot to learn, and it wasn't just her time to be on the show. Just like this next contestant right here. Hopping over to Season 9, Episode 5, and contestants were faced with the daunting task of recreating Chef Ramsay's Crab Benedict in just 30 minutes. Yeah, recreation challenges have been an Achilles heel for even the best chefs. But for Alushala, well, she certainly wasn't the best chef. That ain't right. I gotta do another one. You got it, Lulu. F up one egg. Useless eggs are all over the place. Time was slipping away, and she was clearly flustered. 
But as the clock ran out, Alushala presented her dish to the judges, and Chef Ramsay's reaction said it all. I already know. Her presentation was a disaster. She didn't even bother using the utensils that everyone was provided with. And then I see this. Where is that black plate? It was very clear that she had missed the mark by a long shot. Despite the well-poached egg and perfectly seasoned crab, Alushala's incomplete plate sealed her fate. But hey, at least she left with her head held high, promising to continue cooking. Unlike this next contestant from season 10. I'm feeling like really confident and I'm super excited. So I did have a hard time picking the worst contestant from season 10, but then I zeroed in on this one right here. I've got the deepest knowledge base that's out there. I've traveled the world. I know about a ton of ingredients. Now that's called overconfidence. And don't even get me started on his attitude too. I don't need Gordon's step-by-step -step instructions. I can knock out awesome dishes. To make matters worse for himself, when he was throwing together his tart, he forgot to save the juices he'd taken out. What is that? Looking down at the tart, it looks really dry. Oh no, there was no way they could keep him on the show after this. Where is the caramel? Look, there's nothing, there's no caramel. This is not a tart to 10, this is an apple tart. You know, the less said about him, the better. Speaking of saying less, this next pick from season 11 was real easy. I'm definitely gonna show the judges why it was a good choice keeping me here. Considering all the failed dishes that she had, Anai was determined to prove herself in the kitchen. But unfortunately, it only got worse. So the contestants were tasked with preparing a restaurant quality dessert. However, Anai's dessert left much to be desired. What you have in front of you is an avocado no-bake cheesecake topped off with a dragon fruit. Her avocado no-bake cheesecake sounded really intriguing, but the judges were less than impressed. We still have the base of the actual cheesecake. The base of the cheesecake still had the mold underneath it, and it wasn't even completely baked. Or like at all, considering, well, the whole no-bake part of it. Now, imagine if the judges had to tell that the cheesecake looked more like a dip than an actual cheesecake. You cut corners when it came to even grabbing graham crackers. And the taste? It was even worse. The base is uncooked. I think you rushed the whole thing. Now, just like that, a nice time in the competition came to an end. Good riddance. It's hard to get away from this execution. To not bake or cook anything in a baking challenge for me is a disappointment. Speaking of satisfying laminations, when this next guy got the boot, it was so cathartic, but he took his damn time leaving. If you ask me, season 12 had a whole lot of good. Good food, good cooks, good challenges, and then there was Tommy. I'm afraid of those difficult ones. After dodging the bullet like a million times leading up to this moment, Tommy finally gave up in this dessert round. Into the blast chiller instead of the refrigerator. It's as hard as a rock. I mean, what a mess. The dessert and Tommy, both of them. Tommy, I can get Tommy. it back together. Fast forward to the judgment time, and Tommy's lemon meringue tart was nothing short of a catastrophe. I mean, think about it. That runny mess you're looking at was supposed to be a tart. I bet you wouldn't have been able to figure that out without me telling you. And let's not even get started on the cracked crust and misplaced meringue. That's totally raw. Well, Tommy's dish ended up being the worst of the lot. Shocker. Your meringue is over whipped, it's watery. I think it's clear. Time was a big issue for you. While he did make quite the emotional exit, I'm sure that there were many who were glad that he was finally on his way out. And you could count me among them any day of the week. And now, it's finally time for season 13. Who do you think made it onto the list? Kendall, of course. To me, Kendall always skated by the skin of his teeth thanks to another contestant winning immunity for his region. I guess he just happened to be in the right place at the right time. All the freaking time. However, in episode 10, he unnecessarily complicated things for everyone on his team. So, the challenge was to cook for 100 children. As the team split up, Kendall seemed really confident. I think Sav is a little worried about the chicken, but I am a barbecue grand champion. I've won a ton of awards. However, he quickly stumbled on the blue team's grill, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. This is in your wheelhouse. Own it and control it. Yes. Can we finish strong, Kendall? Yes, but did he care? Of course not. Kendall? No answer. Oh my goodness me. Sorry. Now the famous chef could see right through his act. He held him accountable for the humiliating loss. He then blamed his overconfidence and lack of communication to be the reason behind his elimination. Yeah, try winning immunity now that you single-handedly tank your team, bro. So, do you agree with my ranking of the worst chef from each season? Make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. Plus, if you thought this video was crazy, then wait till you see my next video right here, since it's even better.